Good morning, TOK. Welcome to class 19. This is our last class before we have our Saturday workshop, uh, the Vitruvia. So, what do you know? Today we're going to be talking about ideals. An ideal is a abstract. It is a embodiment of the desired or, or visualization of the perfect. It is the, the type of which reality is an imperfect reflection. Um, the ideal person is brave, strong, smart, beautiful. The ideal sandwich is tasty, nutritious, uh, available. Uh, the ideal song is easy to remember, but not so catchy that it interrupts your day. Today, we're going to talk about the ideals of human beauty, specifically what makes us beautiful. Turns out this is a really complex uh, field of study. Uh, aesthetics, the study of beauty and study of, of uh, pleasurable appearance in, in art, design, uh, aesthetics is a science with lots of data and very, very few hard and fast rules. So we're going to look today at what makes us beautiful. So standards of beauty are not consistent. They are changeable over time. They're changeable from culture to culture, uh, from time period to time period. Um, there are certain recurring themes, uh, but there's no, there's no agreed upon standard. For example, it's been said you can't be too thin, too young, or too rich. And yet there have been societies which prize uh, full figures, maturity. Um, and pretty much everyone agrees on rich, though. Although there are now that I think about it, there are aesthetics that value simplicity over opulence. Uh, the idea of something that is pure and simple and unadorned as opposed to something that is Baroque, the something that is uh, overly decorated or, or embellished. What we have here uh, in our little picture to your right is the Willendorf Venus. Now, this is a Paleolithic artifact. That means it is a Stone Age artifact. It is prehistoric. Uh, it is, in fact, one of the oldest known works of human art. Uh, approximately 25,000 years old, there were a series of statuettes of female figures. Uh, this one is known as the Willendorf Venus, named after the town in which it was discovered in Germany. It shows an idealized female form, uh, one that emphasizes fertility, but it lacks facial distinctiveness. You'll notice the braided hair texture, which is common to many of these uh, Venus figures, um, wraps around the entire head. This is a female figure whose fertility features, her femininity, uh, her breasts, her belly, uh, her thighs are exaggerated. Um, if you were to look at the back of the Venus, uh, the, um, Venus figure, you would see that there is a similar emphasis of the buttocks. Um, but the hands, the feet, the face are diminished or absent. So this is one of the earliest ideas of, of beauty, of attractiveness or importance that we have. Unfortunately, we don't know a lot about the culture that produced it. Uh, so what they thought about these characteristics or why they prized them is something open to interpretation. <laughs> Male figures, too, uh, have been enshrined by artists. Uh, we tend to have more examples of female ideals than we do of male ideals, uh, but that varies from culture to culture and, and among time periods. Uh, Michelangelo, when he was in his early 20s, uh, carved this statue 
Uh, it is approximately 14 feet high. It is the biblical hero David, known for his battle with Goliath. Whereas most sculptors prior to Michelangelo, Michelangelo had sculpted David as a as a youth, as a uh, a young shepherd, usually after his defeat of Goliath, usually posed you know triumphantly with the Goliath's head at his feet or even under his foot. Uh, Michelangelo instead sculpts him before the battle. Uh, David is thoughtful. He is, um, this is, this isn't celebratory. It's pensive. Uh, his physicality is emphasized. Um, he has, in this case, literally rock hard abs. He has the very tall proportions um, but his weaponry, his sling, is almost an afterthought. It's slung over his shoulder. It's almost invisible in most poses, uh, in most views of the pose. Uh, this is a David who is thoughtful, who is contemplative. It is a David of potential, not of action. And it is for that reason, among many others, that this is considered one of the ideal human forms. There are a lot of theories about what makes people attractive, physically attractive, about what makes someone beautiful. Uh, there is a differentiation between attractiveness and beauty. Uh, you can find someone desirable without finding them gorgeous. You can find someone so beautiful as to be off-putting or unapproachable. Uh, there's a lot of discussion among aestheticians and historians and philosophers of beauty, uh, as well as social and psychological scientists who study uh, limerent attraction, that is the attraction that you feel for somebody upon first glance, uh, regardless of their character. Uh, it's purely physical. Much of it has to do with proportion, with symmetry, the relationship among various features on the face. And yet, for every person who meets these requirements, who is considered beautiful, you can find contra-examples. You can find people who are beautiful, considered beautiful or attractive because they stand out, because they are quirky in some way. A face which is too symmetrical can create the uncanny valley effect. This is uh, an effect usually discussed in, in computer graphics or robotics, where something is so perfect as to be inhuman, and that creates a strong aversion response. It creeps people out. If you've ever seen uh, the movie The Polar Express, where the characters have realistically animated eyes and faces, and yet they have these, these dead mouths that don't move properly and their eyes look perfect in still frames but when are they're in motion they don't track and they don't blink properly they don't flick their eyes from side to side they're not distracted by things and it's really the uncanny valley it's very disturbing what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at a number of images of people who have been considered beautiful or considered in some way ideal. And what I want you to notice is what they have in common and also how they're different. How does the context in which you see them? How does the emotional association? How do things like gender, ethnicity, uh, the physical pose, the physicality, the uh, the emotional connotation of the photos, how does that influence your idea of beauty? Our first photo is by photographer Sophie Holland. Her subject is uh, New York Giants running back uh, Sequan Barkley. He was uh, the... Uh, two-time Big Ten Offensive Player of the Year. And as you can tell from the photos, uh, from the photograph here, physically powerful, impressive. There's symmetry. 
This photo emphasizes the balance left to right, uh, the symmetrical uh, nature of his musculature. Unfortunately, this particular pose does not show his face, but looking at the body, this is from ESPN Magazine's Body Issue. Um, up until last year, ESPN Magazine every year ran an issue where they took uh, athletes and posed them in ways to emphasize their physical bodies. So not action shots of, their, of them competing in their sports, not competition, not games, uh, not even practice usually, but treating them as sculptures, as models. Uh, and this is the first. We'll see several of these uh, in today's discussion. Again, this is Saquon Barkley, uh, photographed by Sophie Holland. We have here a, another vision of the ideal. Uh, this is actor Jason Momoa, a Polynesian American actor. Uh, this is from a publicity from a publicity photo from Warner Brothers uh, for I want to say the uh, Dawn of Justice film. This is him portraying the character of Aquaman. What I want you to notice here is. Momoa is physically, obviously, very fit. He, he's in astonishing physical shape. But his beard and hair are, are unkempt. Um, his hair looks like he just came out of salt water because he did. Uh, his face is not symmetrical. He has a scar through his eyebrow. He, he has a little bit of a smirk as he smiles. So what we're seeing here is a combination of a physical ideal with an emotional approach, approachability. Um, for all of his hunkiness, he seems like an actual human being who you could speak to, or I guess in this case, an actual Atlantean. Um, it's up to you whether you find him attractive or not, whether you consider him physically beautiful, uh, that's not really the point. The point is you can understand how people would find him aesthetically pleasing. And we're trying to build our composite, our personal ideal of what makes someone attractive. I'm sure there are people who look at him and go, oh, he's too big. He's too ripped. He's, you know, uh, he's, I don't know, he's too blonde. He's too dark. He's too... Polynesian, I don't know. Uh, others will say, well, uh, he's too old, he's too young. That's the idea behind a personal ideal. Right now, we're looking at components. We're looking at how different people put together the elements of their physical expression and to what extent we can consider them ideal in their appearance and proportion. Okay, here we have another ESPN body issue photograph. Uh, this is on the left, Megan Rapinoe of the uh, U.S. women's soccer team and Sue Bird of uh, Team USA women's basketball. Uh, this is a photograph by Rotka Late Merits. These two were the first gay couple to be featured on the ESPN uh, body issue cover. Uh, Megan Rapinoe is well known for not only her soccer playing, but her political activism. Um, it's only in recent years in American society that strongly muscled, physically, physical athletic women uh, have been able to kind of break through a barrier of being considered unladylike. Um Female athletes were often expected to be uh, very slender. Um, there was a emphasis on a, a kind of delicacy and grace. And modern female athletes, uh, especially in America, are, are really moving against that trend and away from a kind of precious delicacy towards a more... Uh, a more visceral, a more physical type of grace, the grace that comes with power. And we see that in the physique. 
of, of these two women. Now, I'm going to apologize in advance. Uh, I've only seen this model. Uh, I've only seen her name spelled. I have not been able to find a pronunciation. Uh, this is Kodia Diop. She is a Senegalese model. Uh, this is from her Instagram account. Uh, Kodia is well known as being one of the darkest skinned glamour models working in the circuit today. Um, even for those of dark complexions of, of African or, or, or uh, South American or, or, or um, Indian, South Asian uh, uh, ethnicity, for a long time, the Western trend or the colonial trend towards fair skin being considered aesthetically superior has really worked against individuals. Um, Kaudia here was bullied as a, as a young woman, as a teen, uh, for her dark skin. Um, she was bullied for being too dark. And now she has turned that to her advantage. And again, you see a symmetry, a balance in her features. Um, this is certainly someone who could be considered beautiful. And yet you can also imagine someone who looks at her and says, She's too dark, she's too young, she's too... to insert adjective here. Uh, I personally think that she's lovely, uh, which is why I've included her on this list. I've tried to include people on this list who I can understand why people find them beautiful. Uh, and I, I hope that you can understand that as well. Again, Kodia Diop, fashion model from Senegal. So remember that uh, trend I told you about, about female athletes in modern times moving away from the, the um, wayfish, slender standard, uh, being allowed and even celebrated for, for being more muscular? Uh, this is Icelandic CrossFit athlete Katrin Davidsdottir. Uh, Katrin is a two-time CrossFit Games champion and five-time top five finisher. Uh, in this photo by Benedict Evans, uh, you see that she has just astonishing musculature. Um, she has fine features. She has beautiful hair. She has beautiful skin. But the emphasis here is on just her incredible athleticism. To give you an idea, uh, Katrin is only five foot seven, weighs 150 pounds, and can do one-arm pull-ups or handstands pretty much all day long. The celebration of the athleticism. Uh, I'm not sure what else to say. There's some, some wonderful video online of her in competition that shows just her all-around athleticism, and it's worth checking out if you're into that sort of thing. Now, I mentioned earlier that standards of beauty change and evolve. And one of the things that's happening in our, our increasingly global community is that minority groups, which have previously found themselves repressed or uh, they found their, their standards of beauty or their traditions of what is beautiful in a person have been denied or, or, or overridden by the focus of colonial powers, um, imperial oppressors basically establishing their own standards at the expense of minorities. This is Miss Oriini Kayapara. She is from New Zealand. She is a 100% ethnically minor, uh, ethnic Maori, uh, the indigenous people of New Zealand. Uh, what you see here is that she has the traditional facial tattoo that covers uh, the lips, the area down, down the chin, and sometimes the upper lip or the area just above the lip. Uh, this is a standard for Maori women, 
but there has been a taboo against facial tattoos, specifically Maori tattoos in New Zealand uh, for many years. Um, Miss Kaipara was the first Maori newscaster to deliver a on-air uh, broadcast direct camera after she received her tattoos. Uh, and that's seen as a resurgence of Maori pride and striking a blow against imperialist standards, against cultural imperialism, and towards a reestablishing a norm of a local ideal of beauty. Um, I think the, the tattoos are fascinating. If you're interested in Maori culture, we're going to have an opportunity next year uh, to explore it in a little more detail. Um, but again, this is Oriini Kaipara from New Zealand, and this is from the uh, broadcast Instagram account. Again, from the ESPN body issue, um, this time from 2018, I do not have a... Uh, oh, no, here it is. I do have the photographer. The photographer is Peter Hapek. And the model is Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Uh, he is a forward for the LA Ga Galaxy. He is also a member of the Swedish national team and their all-time leading scorer. And if you're thinking Ibrahimovic Zlatan here does not sound uh, very Swedish, that is because refugees and asylees and global mobility is part of the 21st century. Uh, people don't live their entire lives in walking in distance uh, from where, where in the village they were born. Uh, we are in an international and more cosmopolitan view. Um, Zlatan has a variety of tattoos, some of which represent modern pop culture, some of which represent his ancestral uh, ethnic heritage, and a couple of which relate to his life in Sweden or his playing of the football. Um, what I find interesting about uh, Zlatan is <clears throat> that he does represent the very lean body mass. Although he's incredibly fit, he's got very low body fat ratio. Um, he's not bulked up. He's not that super physical, you know, Thor, God of Thunder kind of Marvel superhero body uh, that we're used to seeing on, on men in, in Western culture, um, simply because you can't be bulked up like that and be an effective forward uh, playing, uh, playing professional level soccer. Uh, it, it slows you down. So one thing that's happened is our ideal has expanded our idea of the ideal figure, the ideal musculature, has expanded to recognize there's more than one possible configuration of human bodies that can still be attractive for their aesthetics, for their functionality, uh, and for their ornamentation. Okay, I'll admit to a weakness. This is one of my personal favorites. This is actress Christina Hendricks in a photo from the London Telegraph newspaper. Um, Miss Hendricks is a film and television actress. She's probably best known for her role as Joan on the AMC series Mad Men, uh, which ended a couple years back now. Um, What's interesting about Miss Hendricks is she is not the traditional slender, tiny-waisted, you know, soft-voiced, uh, somewhat infantilized Hollywood woman. She is extremely curvaceous. Uh, she is tall. She is uh, a, a physical presence. She has a, a kind of voluptuous nature that some people consider overtly sexual. Um, what I particularly like about this photograph of Miss Hendricks is, although the dress is, is off the shoulder, it's a little bit revealing, 
uh, it's designed to show her femininity, her pose is confrontational. Head down, direct eye contact, hands on hips. This is not somebody who is backing down. Uh, this is physical display of a personal trait. The personality shows through. Some of the previous photos have had a lot of personality, and some have been more mechanical, a body posed in space without any real individualization to it. Um, one of the advantages of our actors and actresses in this list over our, our athletes is they have a tendency to emote on, on film, the ability to show and to convey to us an emotional characteristic. Some people find it impossible to make aesthetic judgments on purely physical criteria. They can't judge someone's attractiveness or, or beauty without knowing something about them, without hearing them speak, seeing them interact. Uh, so this is one example. Again, uh, Christina Hendricks, actress from the London Telegraph. Okay, we go once again to ESPN's body issue, from, this time from 2017, and photographer Kwaku Alston. Uh, our subject here is uh, Dallas running back Ezekiel Elliott. Um, Elliott is interesting as a physical specimen because, again, he has a much more compact build uh, six foot two thirty. Um, he has fairly broad shoulders, muscular arms. You can see that he's a running back. The power that comes from those thighs, his, his legs, drives him in his uh, his running back duties with the Dallas Cowboys. Um, but you can also see from his pose that there is a balance that he is aware of his body in space. It's surprisingly difficult to pull off that pose without falling over. Um, feel free to try it sometime. Do me a favor, uh, do it clothed, and do it somewhere where you're not going to hurt yourself by falling off a large pink cube, uh, just as a favor to me. Uh, it would be hard for me to explain to your parents or your teachers uh, why I have a bunch of broken... Uh, half-naked students surrounding a bunch of pink cubes. Okay, who are we kidding? It'd be impossible for me to explain that. But again, Ezekiel Elliott, we see a, a very physical, powerful uh, specimen in terms of the pure physicality, but he also has that balance. It implies a certain delicacy, a certain, uh, a certain refinement that you wouldn't get in just a pure physical pose. Uh, it's an interesting composition. So one thing most of our uh, examples of, of the ideal have had in common is that they are young, that they are in their physical primes. Uh, these athletes are fit. These models are, are young and beautiful. Our actresses are... are uh, young. Here we see Liam Neeson, an uh, Irish actor uh, in his 50s, um, who is actually considered more attractive, more, um, more compelling as a leading man in his 50s than he was in his 30s. Um, he has aged into a certain kind of, of grace. Um, he's a very tall man. Uh, he's got the, the broad nose, the strong jaw. And yet his, his eyes are um, have some wrinkles, a little bit of laugh line, a little bit of worry line. This is a lived-in face. And uh, some people find the combination of maturity and experience to be an addition to the purely physical symmetry musculature. I mean, it helps that he's tall and broad shouldered and, <coughs> excuse me, uh, has a beautiful Irish accent. 
Um, but Liam Neeson uh, is an example, again, of a more modern take on the physical ideal. Uh, the things that make him beautiful to people are not the things that would have been on the top of the list uh, in, say, the 1970s uh, or in the, uh, the 1940s. And I think we will end uh, our discussion of the physical ideal uh, with another athlete. Uh, this is a, another Peter Hapak photo. Uh, this is, I don't have a pronunciation guide for her name, N-Z-I-N-G-H-A, Zynga Prescott. She is an American fencer, two-time Olympian. Um, what I find fascinating about Miss Prescott is... Uh, she is extremely athletic, obviously, and in superb shape. Um, I, I fenced in college, and I can tell you, uh, it's brutal. Uh, the physical requirements are amazing because you have to be uh, strong, you have to be flexible, you have to have a, astonishing endurance, you have, need a very strong foundation in your legs, um, and you need uh, you can't be too muscular muscular because you need. Uh, the reflexes and the mobility. Miss um, Prescott is 5'4", 138 pounds. Uh, in this photo from a couple years back, she's 23 years old. And she talks openly about being a woman, being an African-American woman uh, who, who fences. And the fact that her physical type is at odds with... A lot of people's expectations. Um, a lot of people, her size and her height would be uh, would be gymnasts, um, but she's gone in a different and more pointed direction. I also like this pose because it captures the the athleticism of fencing, but there's also a, a kind of graceful there's a peace to it her face is in repose she's she's not uh she doesn't her brow isn't furrowed her her the the lines of her body are clean it looks like she has sprung almost effortlessly and uh, into the air and that's how you can tell true athleticism is that it doesn't look hard uh, you have to be very athletic to not look like you're trying And that brings us to our, <clears throat> excuse me, that brings us to our reflection. What is it that makes a person ideal? Is it merely physical? Um, we talked about uh, symmetry, facial geometry, or, or is it character? Is it you find a person appealing and you find physical traits? Once you decide you like them, you find physical traits about them which you like. Um... Is it undefinable? Is, is attraction just a thing that happens and you can't define what it is that makes someone uh, perfect? How do we decide to, for ourselves what it means to be beautiful? There is an assignment uh, for today, and this goes with the work that we've done all week. I'm going to start a new Padlet. Uh, the link will be in the resources here, and it will also be in your email. But rather than have you write a reflection or response, I want you to find a work of art, a photo, a video, a song, an audio clip. I want you to find something that represents beauty to you. And it can be a person. It can be physical beauty. Um, it could be spiritual or emotional beauty. Uh, it could be a, just a moment of, of bliss, something that you find that goes beyond the ordinary experience, what they call a transcendent moment. I want you to put a, cl a clip. You can drop files directly into the Padlet of, of most types. 
Uh, you can put links to YouTube videos. You can uh, drop photos directly. Please make sure you put your name on it so I can get you credit for the posting. And I'm going to ask that you have those posted before we meet on Saturday so that those of us who are getting together Saturday for the Vitruvia workshop can go over the Padlet as part of our discussion. Again, I'm asking you to post a Padlet. I'll put a couple of uh, sample posts there uh, from my own work, my own experience, my own ideas of beauty, and I look forward to seeing yours. Thank you for your work, and can't wait to see you.